Hello Gainers, Ralphie here on location on a bright sunny day. Thank goodness it's been raining a lot recently. In fact there's been so much rain it probably a, a boat seems like a good investment. <laughs> but anyway, before I get too distracted I want to let you know that I'm here to share another video, a vlog, video blog on Fitter Philosophy, the channel that brings you some practical, stoically based life experience philosophy to help you think a little bit more about your own philosophy. Because in order to gain wisdom, knowledge and ultimately enlightenment, we do need to take one step at a time and move increasingly from the negative into the positive, from the ignorant towards the informed. And one of the most useful things that can help us address our ignorances is uh, proper knowledge, reasoned views and perspective, and taking a bit of time to read a book. Now, books are important more than you might realise because when we go through the school system which is there to indoctrinate us to make us useful functionaries within our communities and society and basically to make more money for the super rich and the powerful because it's part of the human condition and it's good to be realistically aware of it um, we tend to be encouraged to read certain books specific books school books and to be honest the experience can be very off-putting for many people because a number of school books are frankly boring oh, excuse me it's my bag blowing away this is the bag in which I carry all my camera equipment and it's been caught by the wind because you get a lot of wind in coastal areas so I'm going to hold this bag because I need it for carrying my books my first book, you see, it's only when we leave school and get out of the educational system that we have an opportunity to read the books we really want to read. The books that are going to be really useful for us and keeping us informed. So if someone's into sports, they're going to read sports books and learn a lot from that. Or if someone's into sailing, if they're into looking after and owning a boat, they need to read books about that and people's experiences of, of, of owning a boat. And you can get so much for videos and from blogs online, but it's when you read a book, you get all that additional perspective and detail. And when it comes to having a fitter philosophy, a book, reading a book is invaluable. So I'm going to recommend and introduce three books and another book for you, which I've read and I found really useful, very informative, and, and importantly, they were just easy, entertaining reading. So I could mention, as, as many philosophers when recommending books would, I could mention Meditations by Marcus Aurelius or the Tai Te Ching, uh, Chinese philosophical, philo philosophical books, or stuff by Plato. But uh, they have their place, but you'll find those in other channels. They'll be recommended reading in other channels. And my channel, Fit of Philosophy, I'm going to introduce some, some well-known books, but some less well-known books as well. And we're going to start with a book by Jonathan Haid called The Happiness Hypothesis. Now, I'm re recommending this book because it is basically 10 simple practical ideas, one idea per chapter, and it is presented in a very readable, practical, easily analysed way. Um, and it's just a great read. The thing about philosophy, it doesn't need to be too remote and abstract. In fact, that can be off-putting and unhelpful. So to have uh, just an entertaining, practical, good read, it's a book that's... Um, there's quite a lot to it. There's, let me see, 200 and just under 300 pages. So it maybe take you about a week of easy reading, a couple of chapters a day. But I think you'll find it worthwhile. And uh, I recommend the next thing you do is you go to Amazon or even goodreads.com. That's a good site. Go to goodreads.com and just type in the name of this book, The Happiness Hypothesis. And it will give you some quite articulate reviews by readers, by ordinary book readers, who can be extraordinary people. And uh, I think 
that uh, you'll be tempted to buy it. And importantly, it's paperback, it's not too expensive, and it's definitely in print. Now, I'm going to pop this book in my bag, so it'll weigh down my bag and stop it blowing away. The next book is something a little more obscure, and it's called A Book of Silence, and it's by Sarah Maitland. And I just tripped over these book, this book, and it happens in life. We, we go out and we're, we're looking for a book and we don't quite see it, but we discover another book, a hidden treasure. And this is a hidden treasure because it's one thoughtful, contemplative, sensitive humans travelogue, a journey in the experience of living a quiet life and how enriching it can be because we live in a culture in which silence is not to be encouraged. That's why there's so much media white noise, newspapers, radio, television, um, constant noise, constant social media to keep us away from silence because silence is hugely empowering and I'll tell you why. Because when we learn, and it does, does take time, when we learn how to tune in to silence, we discover that we're connecting with the planet itself. Silence is not an absence. Silence is a presence and it's a beautiful thing. Someone, anyone who is comfortable with silence will never be a stranger to themselves. It's a hard bike, by the way. I've read it. I always like to, to keep books in as good a condition as possible because I never know when someone else is going to want to read this um, and I'll just give it to them. Sometimes I do that with books. I just hand them over to someone who I really feel they're going to read it and they're going to learn so much from it. One of the most important things we can do in life is pass on our humanity. Pop this in the bag. Third book. Again, one that's not quite... It's not totally prominent. In fact, I'm reading it for the second time, hence the, the, this is what I set my mug of coffee on, or tea, that I sit it in the book market, I use it as a mat. But this is, uh, the author is Robert Sepper, and this is Species with Amnesia. And I recommend that you go and have a look at the YouTube channels, there's two YouTube channels connecting with Robert Sepper and there's one under his own name, Robert Sepper, just put that in the search. And the other is Atlantean Gardens. He is a California based old school academic, someone who has a true appreciation of the value of knowledge. This is one of his books, all his books are good, compact, paperback reasonably priced and very readable. And when you read them, they will change your perspective on life because he challenges our indoctrinated perspective on the human condition. In this book, he is suggesting that human history from scientific and academic sources and resources is not what we are told it is through the dogma of social conditioning. And in being aware of this and understanding this, we change our view of ourself, and in doing so, we change a view of the world. The humanoid collective does not understand itself, and that is what is the cause of so much distress to humans collectively in the modern world. He is one of these academics that presents things very clearly, very concisely, and very civilly. He's not a tub thumper. He plays, he plays sweet music of pure knowledge. Finally, I've given you three books that I recommend, but I'm going to give you a fourth one as a finisher. And this is for all you fitter philosophers that don't read books. You don't like to read books, so you don't buy books and you don't read books and you just watch videos. I want to change your mind. I want to change your attitude. And the best way to help you do that is to show you a book which is as easy a read as you will ever find. And yet within its pages, there is a huge amount 
of valuable wisdom, knowledge and perspective. And here it is. As a man thinketh by James Allen. It's not very thick, is it? It's not very expensive either. It runs to a total of 35 pages. But inside these 35 pages are some beautifully expressive pearls of wisdom, which by the time you've finished the book, in an hour, it will have given you so much food for thought that you'll be totally full up for the rest of the day. This book was first printed at the beginning of the 1900s, about 1903, 1906. It's never been out of print since because it's a wonderfully off the radar, little stoic, useful read that even though the generations move on and languages change, it's still, it's still a gem, an absolute gem by any standard. And there you have it. I have finished my mission here at Fitter Philosophy to assist you in making your philosophy fitter by sharing three and another very good reads, all totally different, all very, very useful. And if you do go down that road, just take your time. There's no hurry to buy books. They're not expensive. You can do it online. You can do it through a bookshop. The skill is knowing what to buy and where to find it. And you learn as much from the journey as you do from the discovery. I'm Ralphie, sharing my fitter philosophy. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Subscribey, clicky, likey, whatever. -y. And we'll see you again within about a week's time for another video. Meanwhile, as I like to do, I'm just going to leave you for a few moments with a beautiful, sun-drenched, nautical coastal view somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere, which is full of beauty and life and, yeah, full of wisdom too. Thanks for watching.